Some colors are really easy to make in watercolor and some not. In the beginning, many of my students face problems making good colors and one of them is purple. Quite tricky for them, quite tricky for me or magenta, violet or any of the crimson colors or crimson family you can say. Now that is something to wonder. I'm going to show you a couple of ways of making purple using three main colors that we get in a standard watercolor boxes of tubes basically probably in every country especially in India. So if you have one you might have these three colors one of them would be cobalt blue, ultramarine, a Persian. That's all we really need. Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Abhishek. This is Art for Thought. So to understand purple, there are a couple of things which are really important and we have to understand right now. One, the water ratio. Number two, how much paint should you really use? Now, if you're using straight out of tubes or if you're using cakes, things might change. I'm not going to talk about cakes, which you can actually practice at home. Now, let me talk about the tubes. The pigment which comes out of the tube might be quite thick and creamy. So if you pick a lot of paint and do not add enough water, things are gonna look dry. Purple color will not look very nice because it's watercolor, it's quite transparent. It's it's not really like oil or acrylic or gouache paints. So let's learn all the colors individually and see how they actually match or differ. Let's make purple. First, let's take a look at the colors. We have three different blues, like I said earlier. So we have cobalt, we have ultramarine, and we have Persian blue. I also have another blue, which is not really important. So we are going to learn cobalt, ultramarine and Persian blue. We have two different kinds of red over here. This is vermilion red and this is crimson red. And this is slightly darker than vermilion. And this is the red that we really need. Now it can be anything. It can be in the family of alizarin crimson. It can be crimson red, crimson lake and there can be a lot of different terms depending upon the brand but the dark one that's the one we need first applying some clean water let's understand the values first we are going to see the values of red and the values of blue let's start from the red i just pick a little bit we have plenty of water on the palette so we can make a mix that's pure crimson if I clean my brush completely, wipe it off on a dry cloth or a tissue paper and I am going to pick a tiny bit of blue, which is this, and mix it. The values that we see is still reddish. So the red value is actually, I mean the percentage of red is heavier and the blue is lighter. Now cleaning up the brush, if I am going to pick a lot of blue and mix it, now we have a blue dominant color. This is purple. If you add maybe a touch of red into it, drop of water, touch of blue, now that is what we are looking for. Trick is, we have to maintain the pigment and the water ratio in the watery section of it. We cannot make it quite dry. Now let me show you what will happen if it is dry. If I pick heavy pigment like so, and like so, it will be quite dark and you cannot actually see it on your palette as you can see. Now you might think that this looks like purple, but trust me, it will be quite dry on the paper. 
because we do not have enough water. Now I'm not going to mix anymore, rather I'll just use a drop of water and mix it. Now you have a better understanding about the actual color as you can see it flowing. Now let's go and start making purple on the paper. Alright, let's begin. So now we are going to make purple color using two colors. Let's start with the first one, cobalt blue. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add some fresh water, just like so, a couple of times. Now I'm going to pick cobalt blue. Remember, always keep your brush dry when you pick the color because we already have water on the palette. Put it over there. Just put it like so. Be confident. Little more maybe. There we go. Now the first segment that we are going to do will be quite watery. Now as you can see, this is the first value that we got. Now this is towards red. Take a look. It's quite diluted. Quite watery. And we have a color. Now if I add more water to this one, I might get a faded value which would look like this. Now it can be dark pink or it can be magenta. Also you can call it a shade of violet. Now let's move on. If I add, after cleaning my brush, if I add a touch of more blue to it, will definitely have a difference. Now this is going more towards purple now. Cleaning up the brush. Let's add a tint of blue even more. And we'll see. There we go. Now that is purple that we are looking for. But the colors are quite diluted. Like I said earlier, we have to use a lot of water in order to achieve purple color. It has to be transparent, otherwise it will not look purplish. It's quite difficult. Now, moving on. One more time, water over here, cleaning up the brush. This time, I'm going to use a little heavy amount and we'll see how it goes. So I'm picking up quite a bit of blue as you can see. I'm not using any water. Let's have a look. Maybe a drop of water like so. And now I'm gonna clean up my brush, picking up blue again. Cleaning up the brush totally. And now let's pick some heavy red. But remember, we are planning to make a thick color. Now that looks quite good. Cleaning up the brush, wiping it off, picking up a little more heavy cobalt blue. Touch of red again. That's quite good. Let's see the difference. Now we have a rich purple like you see. And if I dilute this one, adding a little bit of water into it, we'll get something like this. Now that is brilliant. What if you have to make something quite faded, more like lavender? Touch of red into it, lots of water and do a very, very, very watery, flat wash like this. Now, something to know. Colors look good when they are wet. But the actual color, especially in watercolor, we can see once they are dried up.
ultramarine, cobalt and persian. As you can see we have three different styles of purple. Ultramarine is quite rich because it's a pre-made blue which can handle purple colors pretty well if you mix it with crimson. Cobalt. Cobalt in, in other words I can say it's slightly darker when you mix it with red and Persian blue it's slightly richer than cobalt blue in my opinion. Now these colors can actually vary depending upon brand and the uh, now this is complicated depending upon the series of the color meaning how much pigment do they mix while making the color for the tube so each change in the mixes can actually produce a different quality of purple so it's something that right now you should not worry about so this is ultramarine cobalt and persian you can make your pick you can pick whichever you want depending upon your subject you can use it purple is a brilliant color all right there we have it i hope you really learned something and i'm pretty sure the practice that you put in from now on will help you a long long way i hope all the best in your watercolor journey and i'm going to see you in my next video or many many of them till then take care be safe bye bye